friends, welcome to another episode of Auto Afflicted. I'm your host, Ali Goulet, and today I'm here with this 2013 Smart Car Passion Level. We're going to go over everything that it is, we're going to take it for a drive, and we're going to answer the question, should you risk owning a smart car? Let's get into it. Right, so 2013 smart car passion level trim. What does that mean? Well, many years ago, Swatch conceptualized the idea for a cute little car, but they didn't really want to go it on their own, so they were going to co-op with a major manufacturer to produce a cute little car. Originally, as the story goes, they went to Volkswagen, and they were in the process of, of putting the thing out when Volkswagen pulled the plug. They went and shopped it around for a little bit and they ended up finding a home with Mercedes. And originally, of course, Swatch wanted to call it the Swatch car, but Mercedes wasn't having any of that and settled on the kind of neutral name of the smart car. And what is a smart? Well, the smart is a one liter, three cylinder, rear wheel drive, rear engine city vehicle. It's designed to give you uh, 36 miles to the gallon and allow you to park all kinds of places. Um, has ample room for adults? I don't know. Let's check out some of the cool features of this thing and uh, see if we can find the engine. So here at the front end, if you want to check your fluid, say your brake fluid or uh, windshield wiper fluid, you just kind of untuck this front panel and inside here you can see brake fluid reservoir, washer reservoir, um, coolant. You know, I got a few, a few things in here, nothing too special. Just tuck that back in there and uh, call it good. Here at the boot, you gain access by popping the rear lid and then uh, little levers here, toggle. Back end opens up. You could, you know, fit, I don't know, a sleeping bag, 36 pack of beer. And back here, you've got another kind of semi-secret compartment that actually has some really nice storage, you know, jumper cables, zip ties in case you need to hog tie someone or actually zip ties are pretty handy. You can. You can fix a lot of stuff with those. Now when it comes time to check the engine, you just dip back here, you pull up this mat, and then you've got this cute little deal just unscrews, and boom, access to the engine. It's plenty hot back there, let me tell you. One of the most common things people think about the smart car is that it's probably not safe because of how tiny it is, and also because uh, most of the body panels are actually just plastic, but it does have what they call the safety cage, which is what you can see here. Under this is actually a steel cage that protects the passengers from crushing or anything like that. So it's actually really, really a fairly safe car. It does have uh, airbags for driver and passenger. They have um, what like head, shoulder, and knee airbags on these, so lots of protection for crashes. But being that it's so small, I do hear that when it gets hit by things larger than itself, it gets punted, not unlike a hockey puck off a stick, just shot away. And honestly, that's gotta be pretty scary. Aesthetically, I think the smart car is really pretty awesome. Like it's got a cute little face, but it's kind of industrial. Uh, the shape is cool. I love the accent of the safety cage that you see in silver and the car just being in gray is really nice. This one has Brabus rims, which is cool. The Brabus uh, is a tuning company out of Germany that, that has tuned Mercedes and they took on the smart car 
with their own Brabus version, which does have some cool upgrades. But this one got the rims, which rims and tires are a little bit wider than what you'd normally get for the average smart car. This car being the passion level gets the 70 horsepower, even though it's only a one liter three cylinder. And you can see these cool little vents in the back that allow the engine to vent there. Just really, I think, a cool piece of styling in this car. As we enter the Smart, you can see there's ample room. Even though I'm not a very big guy, there's still plenty of room for an adult. You've got nice moonroof here. Gives you a really open, open feeling. The uh, interior is really kind of interesting. So you've got kind of a, a hard cloth on the dash um, you know fairly big gauges this the speedo does go up to a hundred which i doubt you'll ever see and then here you've got these cute little pods that do actually show your rpms and an analog clock which is cool the buttons as you'll notice are very familiar they're very much mercedes buttons which is uh, a welcome thing here and honestly i think you know the touch the the ergonomics of it all um it it's really well done as you would expect from a mercedes product in fact i don't know the uh the the seats are pretty interesting they kind of give me a um an airplane seat vibe it's kind of got that sort of texture to the fabric uh, but really i gotta say quite comfy um, steering wheel does not adjust up and down but does have paddle shifters which is pretty cool in the car there's not a ton of storage space you got a little spot here and then they do give you a cute little glove box not much to speak of though and then that is about it you do have uh, a lighter here which is cool kind of a throwback when it comes to space this car isn't too bad in fact you can manipulate the seats here ah God. You try hard enough. Having to reach all the way to the inside of the seats to make them go up or down is, is kind of buggy in my opinion. But you can get them all the way down and if you bring a cozy blanket and if you're only say five foot tall, the, the car camping is uh, could be pretty good. But certainly this seat couldn't be more difficult. You gotta reach around it all the ways. It's not spring-loaded really at all. There we go. Right back in place. This is one of those cars that you lend to your friends and you don't tell them anything about it just as like a joke. Because of course the engine's in the back, the trunk, frunk, is where the fluids are there's nothing there and you can't even tell how to pull the panel out on it and then also the key goes here in the center which definitely throws people off should we take it for a drive off we go so the shift um you know, little shift gear feels pretty nice it rolls out really pretty smooth but something that I noticed that's kind of interesting here is we'll look at the, um, the turning radius. So full lock turning radius is pretty good, but honestly, on a street, my Mercedes sedan turns almost as good. One of the cool designs of this car is that the length of the car is actually equal to the average width of a normal car and so you know with that you really can park it just about anywhere you can nose or ass in to almost any parking spot which is cool until you think about the fact that in most cities they've got designated spots and pay spots and if you're nosing in in between two cars you're probably just going to get a ticket because you're going to be in kind of a no man zone of parking and the parking people are just not going to know what to do with that and you're going to end up with a ticket. But 
I guess in Europe you could just park wherever you want. So this car makes a lot of sense for that. This car does have uh, creature comforts. We got AC, so we're just kicking a little AC on. Honestly, the 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 switches and dials are all really quite nice to work with. I gotta say the AC is what I would call noisy. I'm gonna turn it off. It's got kind of a satisfying little sound to it. The interesting thing about this car is the gearbox, which is a five-speed gearbox, is actually, um, I guess you would call it maybe semi-manual, even though it's an automatic. So it doesn't have a torque converter like a normal automatic, and it does have a gearbox like a normal manual and it utilizes uh, servos and robotic arms and of course, um, you know, technology to make the shift. So when it comes time to shift, it's actually pulling off the gas, it's shifting, putting in the clutch, shifting, and then putting the clutch back out and bringing on the gas. And so it's a really interesting thing because normally with an automatic car, you just mash on the gas, you accelerate up through the gears, and um, you know it's kind of all power where this is cutting out the power as it goes to make those shifts which is uh, it's interesting but it's pretty cool I, I don't know why they do that I tried to research it I just couldn't come up with any good answers so smart 4-2 passion so 4-2 refers to the fact that this car is for two people obviously you got seating for your passenger which is kind of limiting when it comes to friends I mean you can only take one friend at a time road trips are kind of cut down car camping is basically cut down to one person um, so that's that's something to consider I mean as a father of two I really need a car that has four seats I'm just not gonna get anywhere with two seats but, you know, maybe just commuting to work, if that's something that people still did, then it could make a lot of sense for that. So they give you a really pretty nice position in the car. It's, it's comfortable, upright, like I said, it's spacious. One thing I did really notice is the blind spots on this car are huge. You go to look over your shoulder and all you see is basically the back of the car around town you'll find this car is really pretty fun it feels peppy um, you know it doesn't feel like you're really underpowered I mean obviously you got 70 horsepower from a, a one liter three cylinder so it's not like you're gonna burn out or anything but you do have paddle shifters which is pretty cool and uh, they do work it gives you a little bit of satisfaction to try to shift although with uh, how long the shifts take in between it's it's laughable entering the highway though is a whole nother thing it, the power becomes painfully obvious as we're basically you know full throttle fifth gear i'm up to uh let's see 3500 rpms at 75 that's not too bad actually but you know foot all the way to the floor i just don't really feel like i'm going anywhere i'm traveling about 75 now and it's a little bit um I mean, you can feel the wind, the road, everything moves the car around a little bit, but it's honestly not too bad. I don't know if I would do a nine hour drive to California like my buddy does in this car, but it feels, you know, pretty smooth at 80 on the highway. And, you know, we're about 3,500 RPMs, but a uh, red line at 6,000, so. I mean, I don't know if you'd be 
going much more than 80 for too long in this vehicle, but it moves along pretty well. As far as cabin noise, I mean, it's a little noisy, but not too bad. Here into some of the twisties, you know, you can feel that the steering feels pretty nice. I wouldn't want to push this car too hard. I have heard that they can tip right over if you really get into them. But this thing goes along pretty nice. And feels kind of sporty. I don't know. I like it. I would drive one. I just don't think I'd want to be in charge of maintaining one all the time. You know, and then when it comes to potholes and things, having such tiny wheels, every pothole is going to be a nightmare for your wheels. It's just going to gobble them up. That can't be too fun. And so there you go. A nice little tour around review of this 2013 Smart Passion. And the question was, should you risk owning a smart car? Well, the price of entry is pretty low. You know, $1,500, maybe $3,000 to get you into a really pretty nice one. And parts aren't terribly expensive. I mean, your tires are tiny. Everything's so tiny and the car is really reliable But the main downside for me is the simple fact that they just don't bring them to the States anymore No one's supporting the parts and so you're inevitably going to have to order the parts from overseas and Wait quite a few days anytime you have some sort of issues again. It's a Mercedes product So it's pretty reliable, but for me not having four seats, having to sort of supply your own parts via a parts car or something, these are all things that just make it a no for me. But I gotta say, so fun to drive, and I don't know, it's worth checking out. So, friends, thanks for joining me on this little adventure. If you enjoyed what you saw, give it a like. If you didn't enjoy but you're still here, you should probably like it anyway. You know, Think about subscribing, check out the social media, Auto Afflicted on uh, Instagram, and you know, just enjoy the rest of your day, love the ones you're with, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, friends. I don't even know where I'm going right now. I'm just driving around. What should I do? Should go buy some beer and some orange juice.